Hi, I'm Tyler Harris, and you're listening to the Nebraska Notebook. Well, after a brief hiatus, we're back with Mike Swingman, Agronomy R&D Manager at Central Valley Ag, and Keith Byerly, ACS Manager at Central Valley Ag. And today, we're going to be talking a little bit more about nitrogen management. We just wrapped up a meeting with a number of growers in a new nitrogen and water management advisory group. And just for a brief recap, I wanted to visit with both of you about what all was talked about during this group and what, what were some of the questions that were raised and what's the goal of bringing this group of uh, farmers together? You know, I think we'll start with the goal first. Is, um, as a retailer, our goal is when we brought these groups of growers together is to really help fine tune the programs we make around uh, nitrogen and water management going forward. Uh, make them more grower centric, make them more, make more sense to the grower so we can get quicker adoption and, and quicker uh, use of these tools that are available to us today to hopefully move them down a road of increasing their efficiency, increasing their profitability, and, and really telling a story about how they're working to improve their operations every day. And we heard today about improving or at least optimizing nitrogen use efficiency and maybe i'm not using the right phraser but you brought up a good point mike in talking about how if you chase efficiency too much you you might lose a little bit on some cost effectiveness am i saying that right yeah I mean, when we start talking about implementing tools to increase efficiency there there comes a point where the added cost of efficiency is greater than the benefits of the added efficiency so whether it's to go the very next level down to get super efficient if we end up spending a lot of money to get there our net profitability goes down so we have to find the the right amount of nitrogen use efficiency and that's going to change from acre to acre in the field it's going to change from grower to grower it's going to change from farm to farm that that not only makes sense from a sustainability standpoint but really makes sense from a profitability standpoint so we're not giving up profit just for the sake of becoming five tenths of a percent more efficient nitrogen use exactly and it's um we saw some numbers up there today i think 0.7 pounds per bushel was one but that's you know whether or not that's the realistic goal of that grower uh and is it a sustainable goal is kind of the question i think that was brought up here today yeah i mean what we try to get the growers focused on today is being the most efficient we can be on every individual acre. So we know there's acres because of, of the physical characteristics of the soil, whether it be can exchange capacity or organic matter, that they're going to require more nitrogen to produce a bushel of corn just because we're getting less from the soil, more pounds of nitrogen applied. When we, when we, then we get into better soils, it takes less. We want to be the most efficient for each individual acre as we can be and really kind of walk away from this idea of my total farm efficiency is X. Well, that doesn't tell us the real story. That doesn't get us all the way home, right? Like, so we want to start diving into the individuality of your acres and manage to those specific situations. Well, and to get there, we talked about several tools today. And I think that the big ones that were brought up were modeling, uh, PSNT, NDVI imagery, uh, and I think optical sensors, stock nitrate, and uh, the gut feeling, and also the, the original plan. And I wanted to ask about some of those and how each of those kind of plays a part in, in also what challenges or limitations are brought forth when you look at each of them individually and the importance of bringing them all together. I think the interesting thing that went along with that discussion wasn't necessarily the specifics of any one piece of it. I think it was the confidence that the growers have in those pieces. And it's not necessarily confidence is tied to the amount of time that we've been using any one thing. Take uh, the PSNT, the pre-side dress nitrogen test. We've done soil tests for years and years and years doesn't necessarily mean that we have a high level of confidence in incorporating those into our plan versus something like modeling. We, we might have some, some good confidence in modeling even though it's very new on the market. Things aren't necessarily tied to the, the simplicity or the technological advancements that go along with it. It all circles back to that gut feeling and just does it make sense, can I quantify it, and can I measure it from a success standpoint so I know if it was worth my time. And there's also the original plan, which was brought up uh, several times, I think. And that was 
obviously of some import to the growers because that was something along with the gut feeling that the original plan was something it was a good starting point can you elaborate more on that or if we're putting the right information into our original plan like if we're doing the right steps considering the right yield goals based on a normalized uh, variable yield goal and then applying the right amount of thought into how much organic matter plays into it how much can i change capacity plays into it how much irrigation water we're probably going to use plays into that total amount of that recommendation i think we're doing the right work uh up front in the recommendation everything else is mainly just making sure that's running like watching out for the lack of a better term the badger holes hmm. that that could happen in that new that nitrogen plant the big rains the 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 missed timing some of those other things that we had we have to catch up for that's where we're kind of going to use those other tools is to to fill in the gap to make sure we're on track and we're doing the right thing if we've wrote the plan correctly the rest of it's just making sure it goes off like make sure things happen when it's supposed to um, so that's why we added that original plan into the list is because we think we're to a point where our, our recommend our ability to write recommendations is better than it's ever been before but we need to make sure we're doing the right things to to encompass that to get to where we want to go that original plan is really the the offensive coordinator the head coach putting together that game plan for the game and and what we think things are going to look like taking our best ideas from studying the history studying all of that and going forward everything else that's up on the board all of those other pieces are the stuff that's in the quarterback's hands they're the audible plays that you've got to be smart enough to identify when you're out there in the heat of action and knowing which audible to call for a high level of success for it so when we look at that comfortability level that um that you mentioned keith what what are some of the next steps we have to take for example with um oh with some of these this technology like ndvi imagery what, what are some of the, the steps that we need to take to improve that comfortability level amongst the growers with that and you know things like stock nitrate uh, psnt and things along those lines talking about those sort of things from my perspective from the precision ag side of the world what we've done a horrible job on we've filled a notebook we filled notebooks and reams of paper and put them on a shelf of data through the years and things like that and we haven't necessarily done a really good job uh, of quantitating that data to turning it back into profitability maps to, to understand from that data necessarily the intricacies of success and failures like mike said not on a field by field basis but on a acre by acre and a block by block basis out there in the field to go to that next step and i really think that's one of the areas that goes hand in hand with trying to improve all of these things on how we handle nitrogen or water it's all got to come back to we've got to measure it and we've got to study those measurements when they're done and and turn them into something that we can easily discern into success or failure. Well, and uh, part of this advisory group is also about water management. And just for a preview of that, Keith, I wanted to visit with you about what, what are some of the things that you're hoping to work with growers on? I know we had talked previously about soil moisture probe placement, so that'll certainly be a part of it. I think the thing that, that we all have to understand is the water piece of this thing is extremely local to each and every one of us, right? We all have a degree of, of, of a bit of a set of blinders on to look at what's happening in our immediate neighborhoods and relating that back to how we need to be attacking this water problem. And by no means is that not relevant, but we also need to understand some of those bigger picture things like the Des Moines Water Works, the Oglo Law Aquifer Initiative and things like that and take those pieces into consideration and realize that those external forces are applying just as much pressure on what's coming forward with water and our need to be able to better manage our irrigation or better monitor our tile lines or, or even control our tile lines in a different way than we are today. So there, there are still oodles of things that are out there on the board from a technological standpoint to help us improve our water efficiency. At the end of the day, it still comes back to listening to what the need is and, and customizing and building tools that work for our local needs. Well, that's a really good point, Keith, because that 
brings me back to one of the quotes that Mike gave today that was, I think, really valuable when we look at the overall nitrogen management plan was uh, just, I don't know if you'd call it a least common denominator approach when you're talking about building a plan that works across the board for all growers, uh, you know, giving them that universal chassis, I think is how you described it. Yeah, I you know, broke it down to like, if we build the chassis, like uh, if we build the frame and, and put the engine in it and put the transmission in it, and then, then let the growers customize that chassis with how, whatever body style they want it to look like. So build a base program that we can fit what the grower's operational capacity is so it's going to look different from operation to operation but really the the core of the of the tools are going to be the same how we use them is going to be a little bit different and i think it's important for us though to have a basic understanding what that chassis looks like and and how those those four or five pieces fit together and then really to to then when we bolt a piece on or we do something we have a higher confidence and it's going to work first try like we have less failure we don't have to go and make adjustments and try again like we can we can take what a grower does plug it into the system and say yep this will still work even though you want to do this right like because because the the idea is we're not trying to drive every grower to the exact same fertility program that's not what we want not even the same set of management practices not even yeah not even the same they really the same like timings What we want to do is we want to build a system that every grower can become 5% more efficient, right? And just make strides in doing, just doing the things they do, doing them just a little bit better. And then someday if they want to do something else, we have a platform on how to understand if that's going to work or not. But the basis is we, we have farmers doing a lot of good things, a lot of good things. The idea is how can we enable them to do those good things just a bit better? And, and, and that's, that's the direction we want to take growers. Stay on the trajectory of yield growth, become a little bit more efficient every year. And of course, that's what this whole advisory group is all about, is um, taking to that next level and uh, obviously establishing what that chassis might look like too, I assume. Yeah. So. I mean, we, we got a pretty interesting group of growers that have yeah. They, they they have a pretty good a pretty good ability to stretch their comfort zone, right? So it gives us an opportunity to poke around and really test what's going to work. Like, what is their tolerance to other things? And and as long as we stay inside their like we don't bust through that, and and we might expand that comfort zone a little bit. But we have growers that are pretty risk like pretty change tolerant right now in this group. So how do we make that so we can understand how to take that palatability and move it to growers who might be more change resistant? And, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the idea. Is that it's a great instant sounding board. When we're standing up in front of the group and one of us says something, we know whether it's okay or whether it's not. And then we bring up the idea. We can test the room right there. Well, and you can learn more about this advisory group and upcoming Nebraska Notebook podcasts and print issues of Nebraska Farmer. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Nebraska Farmer Magazine. And thanks for listening to the Nebraska Notebook.